previously on Seek as a Construct. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the episode of Seek as a Construct. And today we're going to talk about Megacon 2022, which I was able to attend with my friend Nathan who got me tickets. And I'm very thankful to that, uh, you know, to him for that and, and very grateful because it was a blast. Uh, Saturday was a little too much for me. Uh, we ended up going on Saturday and I only wanted to go for half a day and I thought that was originally the plan and then it just got longer and longer and we ended up staying and then we went to some panels, which we'll talk about here in a minute and stuff, but, and then walked the floor. So it started to, you know, weigh on me. And then we also went to Artist Alley, which was great because I was able to walk down it and I was looking for friends, people that I knew and stuff. And I ran into a couple who I'll talk about here shortly too, uh, but but it was just overwhelming. And I really wish we had planned that better. And I wish we did, you know, Artist Alley on a day that was slower because Saturday was just so intense. It was just barrage, barrage, even to the point where on Sunday, even though Sunday was a slower day, that I think the damage had been done with me being in crowds and it, it lasting the whole day Saturday. I haven't even done Comic-Con like a full Saturday in years um, when I was in California. And, uh, and I have been out of the con going experience for a while now because of COVID and only I did Megacon last year, but it was a much smaller show last year. So this one was very up to par. It was over 100,000 people and it was very packed and the aisles just weren't wide enough. And it was a lot. It was a lot to, to do and, and, and get through. But overall, the, the, those minor negatives with my health aside, I did still have a blast. And I did run into people that I knew. So it was it was a lot of fun. I got to see my friend Livio Ramondelli, who is a, a ph phenomenal artist uh, and writer now too, doing uh, books like The Kill Lock, which is something I've reviewed on this channel before. And I got the new uh, series, issue number one. I missed it uh, because I haven't really been buying comics monthly. And when I went into a comic book store not too long ago, um, I, they were out of number one. And I was like, crap, I need to get number one. So luckily he had some on, you know, on hand there and he signed it and then did a sketch for me of one of the, the robots in it. So I'm a big fan and, you know, we reviewed the first series, at least the first four issues. I never did review the, the last two issues because I didn't want to get into spoilers. But maybe now that this one is out, I'll do like a review at some point of those uh, last two issues of the first series and then maybe give you my thoughts on this one too. We'll do it all in like one video. So that'll be coming up and I'll make that a Seek and Destroy episode. Um, and then, you know, also at the con, like my main thing was, you know, oh no, I'm sorry. I want to mention some of the friends I ran into. Uh, my friend Joe Doyle, who is an amazing artist. Uh, we met him last year at MegaCon and then he and I have stayed in touch over the year. And we've been, you know, trying to like, you know, hit up each other and like meet up at some point because he doesn't live too, too far from me. But with my health and then with work and a lot of other things and his, you know, work and his life, and he was traveling as, as you know, COVID and the pandemic were winding down a little bit, you know, more cons started happening and that's his livelihood. So he's traveling and doing shows. So we never could meet up. Uh, so it was, it was weird to see him again a whole year later, uh, but, you know, being friends and having only met the one time. But that's kind of how it is in comic books. Sometimes you meet somebody like at New York Comic Con, you know, we would sign next to people and then I wouldn't see them again until next year's New York Comic Con. Um, or if they came out to San Diego, I would, I would be able to see them in San Diego. So sometimes you do, you just have those people in, in the comic book world that you just see at cons because your lives, you know, are crazy. <laughs> so, uh, so it was fun to see Joe and I actually bought some prints from him. Um, he's been doing some Moon Knight stuff. And since I'm becoming a really big Moon Knight fan, thanks to the show, uh, I picked up this print here, and then I also had to get one of his Venom drawings, too, because uh, last year I bought his stuff, uh, you guys remember, it used to be hanging on the wall, uh, which was like a Venom version of Jason Voorhees and a Carnage version of, uh, of uh, Freddy Krueger, I think. So yeah, he does some amazing stuff, and then he did like a Peter Parker black costume um, Michael Myers Halloween thing, which was awesome. Uh, but then he also, I got this one, this one's already in a frame. Um, and this one's really cool because uh, he actually did a gold trim around it to add some, you know, effect to it. So when the light hits it a certain way. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, that's like TV show version of Moon Knight. And that's the, the version I really like. You know, I loved Oscar Isaac's performance. And I loved it so much that I pretty much just went to the show to look for Moon Knight stuff. Uh, right now, there is no official movie or TV show uh, merchandise out for Moon Knight. 
outside of like a couple t-shirts and like a poster and stuff. I think like our universe has a nice button down with the scarab on it. And then there's like t-shirts that I ordered from Hot Topic and they should be coming in soon. So I'll probably make a video on those. And I found even a couple t-shirts at, uh, at Megacon, but I'm gonna save those for a separate video because uh, I like them. I got the, it's just, they're just the symbol and stuff. This one, I actually have an Oscar Iser shirt on right now. <laughs> this is Apocalypse. Uh, this, I got this at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the actor and his performance in Moon Knight is amazing. It's it's really awesome. And so I've really gravitated to the show and my friend Nate has seen me like, get, you know, this is a character Nate has liked for years in comics and I had very little interest in Moon Knight. And then after seeing the show now, I'm like super, super into everything. And and uh, there is there are personal reasons why and everything. And, and as you guys know, there hasn't been a lot of content on this channel and it all ties together. And I promise at a time where I feel comfortable uh, talking about it, I will, but I don't want to make my, my channel's always been about the things that escape my health and everything. And even though if my health stuff is changing or new, th or we're learning new things, I still want this channel to be about the stuff I love and I, you know, and not so much about my health, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to find a way to explain what's been going on and then also still continue to do what I love and talk about things that I love. So I'm, I'm struggling with that balance, I know, but I'll, I'll get there, I promise. And uh, and going to you know MegaCon this year was a big eye opener for me in reminding me of like the stuff I really do love. And uh, and so my friend Nate is really trying to embrace that with me. So he picked up some cool things for me. Uh, he actually, uh, we got this Moon Knight thing. It's not an exact replica of the show version. It's just someone made things that just hang on walls. Like so you could put like some tape on the side, um, you know, to, to stick it onto a wall. So I'm going to display this. Uh, I am still in the process of moving. As you can see, there's some empty shelves uh, back there, <laughs> right over there um, above Ace's new bed. We were waiting. I sent an application for a new apartment and I'm just waiting to be approved. And then once that's the case, then I'll finish packing stuff up. But right now it's been hard to plan things for that move because I haven't been accepted in this new apartment yet. So we're still waiting and I think we'll get an answer hopefully in a week or so. Uh, but Nate doing, you know, being really awesome. He got me this. Uh, this is a Mr. Knight uh, mask that actually magnets together like this. Although the magnets aren't very strong, which is probably good because I can't really have magnets near my head anyway. So I'll probably find, but these aren't very strong ones, so it, it won't bother me. But, uh, but I'll find another way to attach this. Uh, but I could cosplay in this if I wanted to. I could fit into it and um, it lights up. So like the eyes, sorry, let me put this down. Um, the eyes light up and I don't think, you can kind of see it a little bit there. But uh, yeah, you can see the blue in there. So they light up blue around the around the edges. So um, very cool. And they don't bother me. Like I tried it on just to see how it is. Um, the lights don't bother me too much. But I wouldn't, I couldn't wear this for a long period of time. Uh, but it's still, it's really cool. And since I can't wear it for a long period of time, I'm so glad that the guy who 3D printed this and sold it to my friend Nate sold, uh, made this base for it. Um, and I don't know if it'll zoom in there or not. There we go. You can see it says Moon Knight, uh, what's the, the show logo, <clears throat> and uh, it has a stand, and there's a spot inside the helmet that the stand can rest on, and so you can kind of prop it up. Pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, and since Stephen Grant was my favorite character on the show, I, I was really cool to get a Mr. Knight mask, because that's kind of his version of of like the Moon Knight suit, you know, and stuff. Uh, so yeah, really awesome. Um, and then uh, and then Joe actually, Joe Doyle, when I ran into him, he hooked me up with some other stuff, but I, I don't want to share too much of it, uh, but it's really cool. And it's, it's actually props from the Venom Let There Be Carnage movie, uh, which is really nice of him. So, you know, Joe, thank you for, for hooking me up with some of that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, they're, they're just like little trinkets that were in like scenes uh, from the movie. But that was really cool of them to uh, you find some of that stuff, I guess, you know, because props and things get sold online all the time and you can buy them up. And uh, he had a couple extra ones and he's like, hey, man, uh, I know you're a big Venom fan. And so is, you know, so is Joe. So that was very nice of him. So whenever I get into this new apartment, there will be a lot of Moon Knight stuff in the background. There's, I, it's a much smaller apartment. It's a studio. Um, so it's kind of going back to my early days on YouTube where I was started this channel in a studio apartment. 
This one's a little bit bigger than that one, thankfully, but, uh, but that's what we're, we're going to be moving into. So I'll have a lot less room. So I have to choose of what's in the background. And since I have, I'm collecting a lot of Moon Knight stuff now, you'll probably mostly see Moon Knight stuff in my background, but it also depends on how I can configure this new apartment and if what furniture I can fit in there. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of changes, uh, you know, coming up, but uh, change is good. And in this case, as I'm going through, you know, all these personal things that I'm going through and health and work and everything, um, and work is winding down. I transferred to another location uh, recently with work. So my life is calming down. And so it was nice as things are winding down and Ace is like, you know, we got through a lot of his health stuff and he's doing a lot better. It's like we're, we finally got through, you know, a, a big chunk of, of the stuff that was impeding me on being creative and, and and you know i did kind of burn out a little bit for a while there too and then after echo and then work it's like i started getting stressed out and my life was just not a good place to come on here and just make content all the time it would have added more stress and and fatigue and i would have i wouldn't be here if, if i just kept adding stuff onto my plate so i had to just take some things away and i hope you guys understand that but going back to megacon and seeing everything and being around comics again just kind of relit that fire um so it's going to take me time because i got a lot of other stuff still going on right now uh, but i'm working on a, a new work schedule at this new location and uh, and then i'm doing other stuff for my health um on my days off so i'm doing a lot uh but uh but i i am but it is less intense now and we're getting through a lot of it so you know i'll have stuff for you guys you know as we keep going forward on this channel um and then also, let's show you some other stuff I got. I got some Funko Pops uh, of Moon Knight Spider-Man, Arachnite. I, I think I know what this character is. I think I've seen a picture of it before. But it was like, I'm so desperate for Moon Knight stuff that I'm even buying stuff that isn't fully Moon Knight. Um, I did pre-order some of the new Moon Knight Funko Pops that are coming out. Um, so, yay. Like, I'm actually getting actual, you know, TV show merch, which is awesome, outside of the t-shirts. Um, so yeah, so I just, and I had not just like a good time with Marvel stuff. Nate, uh, found Wally West for me, which is like a Walmart exclusive. So I got another DC McFarlane figure. Um, and then he also got me this, which I've wanted for a long time and just never bought. He found one with a damaged box. So I think they gave him a discount, uh, Batman deceased. And it's like a Batman statue where he's turning into a zombie and he's wearing Mr. Freeze's costume to slow down his transformation. Um, it's such a great scene and that, that comic, I kind of like, I'm like, all right, it's pretty good. Um, but that scene I loved. And when they made a statue of it, I was like, oh, I kind of want it. Cause I'm a big Mr. Freeze fan. Um, and so that was cool that Nate got me the mask, the toy that, uh, he's been helping me out a lot with the uh, health stuff. You know, he's my emergency contact at work. So he's been really great. Him and his wife have been helping me a ton, um, over the past few months, um, you know, kind of accepting these new things that I'm going through. And, and like I said, I hate to be vague right now and bring it up and keep being vague, but I'll, I'll get to a point where I feel more comfortable about it, but I have to get to a point where I'm more comfortable with it first because I have a lot of misconceptions and I'm, I'm learning. So, um, so we'll, we'll get into all that, you know, at some point down the road. We also got this, it was a print from the new show, uh, like a mini poster for Moon Knight. So this was cool cause it's like official, you know, Moon Knight, um, artwork or look it's like actual his look from the show and also this image which i saw on instagram um i don't know it just popped up in my feed because i just look for moon knight stuff all the time now and this is just a really cool print and i have this on a t-shirt too this exact drawing is on a t-shirt not with all the all this in the backgrounds off it's just moon knight and layla there as the scarlet scarab and then conchu's skull um but that image i have on a t-shirt as well um and it's it's pretty badass so yeah, I mean, I just made this this whole thing, you know, was kind of for me getting back into the world of comics and, you know, just I, I a lot of my life has changed, you know, so it, it was I, I, this came about at a perfect time and an imperfect time. And that's kind of why I had I kind of just try to embrace it. And Nate was a great um, help with that. And we, you know, and I ran, like I said, I ran to other friends like Joe, seeing him helped me and I got to talk to him about it. Um, and then also I ran into my friend, John, uh, who was uh, him and his wife who were our fiance who were dressed up as characters from the mummy because they were excited to go meet Brendan Fraser, who was there, um, which is so awesome. I love Brendan Fraser and I wish I would have thought of that or had money before the show to maybe, you know, buy the, the ticket or whatever to go see him. But still, it, it's fine. Like, they, they had a great time, and I saw him from a distance, and 
he seems like such a cool guy and i love doom patrol i'm a big fan of him on doom patrol and i love the mummy so as you know seeing john and, and his wife uh, dressed up as uh, Evie and, and Rick was like really really cool and uh, and I saw a lot of great cosplayers I mean I'll try to have some images up there's a lot of Moon Knight cosplayers I saw um, and I try to take a picture with as many of them as I could or take pictures of them if I could um, but there was just so much and it was it really was just like this nice uh, reconnection with this world that I've been separating from because I don't know, I'm just, there's a lot going on in my life. And I think after experiencing grief on the level that I did, and then also trying to um, deal with, you know, disappointment on top of that with work, and then also to deal with health and have to get another coiling surgery again, um, it, it just, it feels like just life, you know, and I know a lot of us get this way where we get to a point where we just can't take any more that life keeps hitting us with. And and for me, I really couldn't take any more. And it got really, really bad. And the last thing I wanted to do was come on this channel and fake something, you know, and not feel genuine. So the few videos I had were the few times I felt energetic or felt happy about something that I wanted to talk about. And all the other times, like, I just didn't want to force it. And that's really, at the end of the day, that's really the, one of the major reasons why I haven't posted as much. Um, there's obviously another reason, too. Uh, but that was a big part of it was just... I'm like, I can't, I, I can't get in the headspace right now of excitement over stuff. Megacon, I think, helped pull me back into that excitement. And uh, and it was neat because I got to, we went to a couple panels. Uh, we did this one here, which is like uh, the Axonar. It's like some Star Trek fan film. Uh, they seem nice enough, the people on the panels, and they definitely seem passionate. But they also seem a little arrogant and a little cocky and uh, and, and, you know, act like they make the best stuff out there and i'm kind of like well that's also always always subjective you know when it comes to like what you think your you know your art is and you know a lot of times like you really have to sometimes that's the thing about comic books is like you don't want to have an ego but you also want to believe in yourself that you're making great stuff so there's like this fine line you got to walk and and the folks that were on these panels seem super nice and like i said super into what they're doing but i think i remember this story from back in like 2014 with them creating the star trek uh fan film and they raised so much money that they were like oh well we can build a studio and a set for other people to use and rent out to other people and then we can fund our, give ourselves salaries and it that just seemed always seemed excessive to me i'm like well so you have this now this like hundred thousand dollar a year salary off of star trek but you don't work for star trek or paramount or cbs or whoever so it's like i can understand working with your friends and making a fan film that's like 15, 20 minutes long. And it's like you just getting a love letter to Batman or Superman or whatever character you love and doing it like one or two times or a couple times just to, you know, on the weekends. And, but this felt like a real production. And I'm like, well, that's great, but that's the line, right? Like fans, you can't go that far into it because then you are really, you're a real set, you're a real movie set. So it was interesting now after all these years hearing uh, Alex's side of it, because I don't know if I've ever really listened to him in interviews um so it was it was neat just kind of hearing his side of it but I, I still like i think i still stand in my original position of it um but there is there's a lot of gray there's a lot of nuance and, and stuff like that i guess and and as i get older I, I realize that more and more so it was it was a neat experience overall going to those panels but after on sunday i was like i we did i did their panel and then i was like i gotta go i don't feel good uh it's, i've been around too many people this weekend and i had a jet unfortunately um but uh but overall though the fact that i went through you know three days of a con and then like half uh, well i guess the first day i was there only for like two hours and then on sunday i was there for like two hours so or three maybe hours so it was it was fine i i think that was a little bit more con than i'm able to do uh next year i think i'll i'll go easy on saturday and then maybe i'll do the full like friday and sunday and I'll kind of take it easy on Saturday. Uh, but that was just a great time overall. And I and it was a big, a, a good bonding time for me and Nate, um, uh, you know, especially with my health. Like uh, he actually experienced some of the stuff I'm going through uh, in person. And that was, um, you know, because uh, you know, he's always been my emergency contact, but he's only seen certain things because uh, as an emergency contact, he shows up afterwards. This time he actually got to experience things right in front of him and uh and i think it helped him understand a little bit more and him see just exactly what i've been going through and how hard it actually can be for me and how difficult it's been and it's 
on some level, as much as I don't want people to see me in those instances where I'm struggling, it does bring some sense of calm for me because then he understands now fully. And he's like, oh, wow, okay, I, I, I got it on paper. I understood. And I've, I've been there and seen the aftermath of some of this. He goes, but this was something different and, and, and something I needed to see for me to understand. And he goes, and I'm, I'm glad I did. And, and uh, so we had this very emotional conversation about it afterwards. And, um, and it was overall, it was just a great experience for personal growth, health stuff, you know, reconnecting with comic books, checking out Moon Knight stuff. Like overall, this was just a blast of a time. And I, I'm so grateful that this show ran this year and it ran at the capacity that it normally does, which is 100,000 plus people, because I got to see it now. Um, I think I came to MegaCon back when we did Soul Star in 2013 or something. And to see the show like nine years later at its full capacity and how big it is, I mean, it's awesome. I had such a great time and I, I can't wait to come back next year. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.